Hey, what's up everybody? Today we are back with part two of the War of Art. Starting with a quote from the Dalai Lama. The enemy is a very good teacher. Resistance's greatest hit. The following is a list, in no particular order, of those activities that most commonly elicit resistance. The pursuit of any calling in writing, painting, music, film, dance, or any creative art, however marginal or unconventional. The launching of any entrepreneurial venture or enterprise for profit or otherwise. Any diet or health regimen. Any program of, of spiritual advancement. Any activity whose aim is tighter abdominals. Any course or program designed to overcome an unwholesome habit or addiction. Education of every kind. Any act of political, moral or ethical courage, including the decision to change for the, for the better some unworthy pattern of thought or conduct in ourselves. The undertaking of any enterprise or endeavor whose aim is to help others. Any act that entails commitment of the heart. The decision to get married, to have a child, to weather a rocky patch in a relationship. The taking of any, of any principled stance in the face of adversity. In other words, any act that rejects immediate gratification in favor of long-term growth, health, or integrity. Or, expressed in another way, any act that derives from our higher nature instead of our lower. Any of these will elicit resistance. Now, what are the characteristics of resistance? Resistance is invisible. Resistance cannot be seen, touched, heard, or smelled but it can be felt. We experience, experience resistance, sorry, we experience it as an energy field, radiating from a work in potential. It's a repelling force. It's a negative. Its aim is to shove us away, direct us, prevent us from doing our work. Resistance is internal. Resistance seems to come from outside ourselves. We locate it in our spouses, jobs, bosses, kids. Peripheral opponents, as Pat Riley used to say when he coached the Los Angeles Lakers. Resistance is not a peripheral opponent. Resistance arises from within. It is self-generated and self-perpetuated. Resistance is the enemy within. Resistance is insidious. Resistance will tell you anything to keep you from doing your work. It will perjure fabricate, falsify, seduce, bully, bully, kaole. Resistance is protean. It will assume any form if that's what it takes to deceive you. It will reason with you like a lawyer or jam a 9mm in your face like a stick-up man. Resilience has no conscience. It will pledge anything to get a deal, then double-cross you as soon as your back is turned. If you take resistance at its word, you deserve everything you get. Resistance is always lying and always full of shit. Resistance is implacable. Resistance is like the alien or the terminator or the shark in Jaws. It cannot be reasoned with. It understands nothing but power. It is an engine of destruction programmed from the factory with one ob object only to prevent us from doing our work. Resistance is implacable, intractable and indefatigable indefatigable. Reduce it to a single cell, and that cell will continue to attack. That is resistance's nature. It's all it knows. Resistance will... Sorry, re resistance is impersonal. Resistance is not out to get you personally. It doesn't know who you are, and it doesn't care. Resistance is a force of nature. It acts objectively. Though it feels malevolent, Resistance, in fact, operates with the indifference of rain and transits the heavens by the same laws as the stars. When we marshal our forces to combat resistance, we must remember this. Resistance is infallible. Like a magnetized needle floating on a surface of oil, resistance will unfailingly point to the true north, meaning that calling or action Sorry, meaning that calling or action it most 
wants to stop us from doing. It's a bit of an awkward sentence. We can use this. We can use it as a compass. We can navigate by resistance, letting it guide us to that calling or action that we must follow before all others. The rule of thumb, the more important a call or action is to our soul's evolution, the more resistance we will feel towards pursuing it. Resistance is universal. We're wrong if we think we're the only ones struggling with resistance. Everyone who has a body experiences resistance. Resistance never sleeps. Henry Fonda was still throwing up before each stage performance when he was 75. In other words, fear doesn't go away. The warrior and the artist live by the same code of necessity, which dictates that the battle must be fought anew every day. Resistance plays for keeps. Resistance's goal is not to wound or disable. Resistance aims to kill. Its target is the epicenter of our being, our genius, our soul, the unique and priceless gift we were put on earth to give and no one else has but us. Resistance means business. When we fight it, we are in a war to the death. Resistance is fueled by fear. Resistance has no strength of its own. Every ounce of juice it possesses comes from us. We feed it with, we feed it with power by our fear of it. Master that fear and we conquer resistance. Resistance only opposes in one direction. Resistance obstructs movement only from a lower sphere to a higher. It kicks in when we seek to pursue a calling in the arts, launch an innovative enterprise, or evolve to a higher station morally, ethically, or spiritually. So if you're in Calcutta working with the Mother Teresa Foundation and you're thinking of bolting to launch a career in telemarketing, relax. Resistance will give you a free pass. Resistance is most powerful at the finish line. Odysseus almost got home years before his actual homecoming. Ithaca was in sight, close enough that the sailors could see that the smoke of their family's fires on the shore. Odysseus was so certain he was safe, he actually lay down for a snooze. And then, yeah, sorry, it was then that his men, believing there was, a gold, there was gold in an oxhide sack among their commander's possessions, snatched his prize and cut it open. The bag contained the adverse winds, which King Aeolus had bottled up for Odysseus when the, when the wanderer had touched earlier at his blessed isle. The winds burst forth now in one mad blow, driving Odysseus's ship back across every league of ocean they had with such difficulty traversed, making him endure further trials and sufferings before, and last and alone, he reached his home for good. The danger is greatest when the finish line is at sight. At this point, resistance knows we're about to beat it. It hits the panic button. It marshals one last assault and slams us with everything it's got. The professional must be alert for, for this counterattack. Be wary at the end. Don't open the bag of wind. Resistance recruits allies. Resistance by definition is, is self sell Resistance by definition is self-sabotage. But there's a parallel peril that must also be guarded against. Sabotage by others. When a writer begins to overcome her resistance, in other words, when she actually starts to write, she may find that those close to her begin acting strange. They may become moody or sullen. They may get sick. They may accuse the awakening writer of changing, of not being the person she was. The closer these people are to the awakening writer, the more bizarrely they will act, and the more emotion they will put behind their actions. They are trying to sabotage her. The reason is, they are struggling consciously or unconsciously against their own resistance. The awakening writer's success becomes a reproach to them. If she can beat these demons, why can't they? Often couples or close friends, 
even entire families, will enter into tacit co compacts whereby each individual pledges unconsciously to remain mired in the same sloth in which she and all her cronies have become so comfortable. The highest treason a crab can commit is to make a leap for the rim of the bucket. The awakening artist must be ruthless, not only with herself but with others. Once you make your break, you can't turn around for your buddy who catches his trouser, trouser leg on the barbed wire. The best thing you can do for that friend, and he'd tell you this himself, if he really is your friend, is to get over that wall and keep motating. The best thing, sorry, the best and only thing that one artist can do for another is to serve as an example and an inspiration. Now let's consider the next aspect of resistance. Symptoms. Before we kick into, this, into the symptoms, we might call it there. Part two is a fair bit longer than part one. I don't want to bore you guys. We'll come into the next section when we start talking about resistance and procrastination and their symptoms. Thank you all for watching and I'll see you in the next one.